Um, I just want you to know that I, I don't, I really am mindful that familiarity is never a good thing in the kingdom of God. And I truly mean that. We honour you. We love you. We are not familiar, though we are good friends and we muck around a lot. Um, we really do. Well, you do. I bring the sensibleness to the relationship. Um, but we just honour you and we love you very much and we honour you as a man of God and I'm very confident you have a word in season for us. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks for having us. Um, I just want to pick up on a couple of things that Jackie said before I really get into my word this morning. Um, with the Casper deal, uh, the first, we've had two Sundays collecting. Um, the first Sunday, we had the people in our church lined up from the front, um, the, where, they, where they were coming out to pick up tags, right down to the back of our church. And um, all the cards we had that day went that morning. I think the thing that did seal it, Actually, it was when Val got up, interrupted me, by the way. So it's so unlike Val. But Val got up and, um, and just shared actually what Casper meant. I had read it on the website, but, you know, it was when Val shared, um, it really touched me again too. And um, so people really responded. And, and so we're just so excited to partner together in, doing, in bringing these gifts to these children. Um, and then last week we had another few to hand out as well and they all just went and it was just like perfect number so anyway we're so really glad to be part of that and um, but the other thing I want to just touch on um, because it really fits with my message is what Jackie was saying about one week you've got this lovely church all set up just beautifully and perfect and the next week there's all junk all around and it's all like a you know a construction zone our lives can be like that our lives can so be like that and the thing is, um, there are seasons in life. There are seasons where everything is, is just all wonderful and there are seasons where, like, God is just doing something and often we don't understand what it is. So that kind of fits with the theme of my message, as, we will, as you will see. But firstly, I want to ask a very personal question. Who loves exercise here? You know, I know there are some people in this church, and I'm just looking around to see if they're here, but I don't know if they are. There are some people in this church who actually are absolute legends with fitness and exercise. And, you know, I, I have seen the photos on Facebook. Um, people up to their eyes, their eyebrows in mud. You know, it's crazy stuff. Some people just can't wait to feel the pain. They love it. They love the burning muscles. They love getting all sweaty to the point where they are gasping for air. I'm not a fan of exercise. <laughs> but you know what? As I get older, which we all are, I understand that if, if I want to you know, stay healthy, um, stay active, feel strong, then I've got really no choice but to push myself and to stretch myself. And I get it. I get it that, you know, I've, I have to get out of my comfort zone uh, and get some exercise and physical activity happening. And I am so blessed to have a wife who is very encouraging in this department. And, you know, if I'm not pushing myself hard enough, she soon jumps in and does that pushing for me. And, and she says it's because she loves me. I really think it's because she loves to see me in pain. We recently had these, um, this is all relevant by the way, we recently um, bought these straps that are attached to like an anchor on the wall and, um, and thanks to the amazing fitness guru, guru Steve Gilman, uh, who many of you know, we're learning how to use this TRX system uh, which covers just about every exercise that you could think of and if you have no idea what I'm talking about that's okay because until recently I had no idea as well um, but, but it's growing on me. And we, you know, we, we also get out, we do some walking and riding our bikes occasionally. And Venice is a champion in all this stuff. She says it gets her endorphins going. I'm not sure what an endorphin looks like. She says to me, don't you feel, don't you feel exhilarated and, and don't you feel good for doing a workout? And, you know, up until recently, I would have said to her, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. But a couple of times just lately, 
just lately, something seems to have kicked in and I actually feel good after a workout. And that's a new thing for me. But you know what? Left to my own natural devices and without that revelation um, of the importance of exercise in my life and, and for health and well-being, which fortunately I do now have, I would be quite happy to just sit and relax, read a book and basically do everything to avoid any form of physical um, discomfort. Hopefully these new, new, newly discovered endorphins will help. So what on earth has this got to do with my message? Well, I want to share with you a few thoughts this morning from what I believe God is saying to the church right now. We've had this theme running for a long, long time, you know, about making room for God. And in fact, you know, coming up here is such a blessing for us um, to just link in again with you guys because Arise Church is a big part of our story of making room. You know, along with um, Paul and Megan from Casino and, and some of the guys from, from Coffs Harbour, uh, INC Church as well, we all stepped out and we made room for God to build and establish a church, a brand new church in Lismore. And there's a lot, you know, a lot that we didn't have right at the beginning. We didn't even have pastors. Um, and we, didn't even, we didn't have a worship team. But what we did have was vision. We had passion, dedication. We had a, a, a team approach. And some of you here um, were part of that original team. Then along came Alan and Jackie. Thank you, Jesus. And along came this incredible building, which has an amazing testimony and story behind it just in itself. You know, our testimony together um, is that when you make room and you take faith steps together and your goal is for God's kingdom and for his glory to be extended, extended then God's, God's presence comes. His provision comes and his blessing comes. I won't go into the whole story now, but there's... You know the story of the Shunammite woman who made room for, for God's presence by actually building and adding on a room to her house. Um, she wanted to, to make this room for the prophet Elijah to actually stay there in her home you know, when he was doing his travels, coming and, coming and going. And it changed her life. It made room for a miracle. Out of that, she actually um, had, had a child, had um, a baby, a son. And it's an amazing story. You can read all about that in Two Kings. But today's message is not just about making room for God. It's about, it's about stretching and growing. Um, and this is where the exercise analogy comes in. And this is where some of the changes that happen in our lives um, comes in as well. In Isaiah 54, 2-3, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Now these words, enlarge, stretch, lengthen, strengthen, expand, you know, to be honest, those words kind of went into hibernation during this COVID period that we've just come through and I'm not even sure that they have fully emerged again yet but there there is a, a stirring going on there's definitely a stirring going on we've become so very comfortable with our little COVID adjustments um, but God hasn't called us to be comfortable he's called us to be to be mature to grow to stretch ourselves beyond our comfort zone and beyond whatever you know, we have come to know as normal. And if, if, this is, if this is the new normal, like generally speaking, if this is the new normal that everyone was talking about right at the beginning, then I must have got the wrong memo. Because I don't believe normal is what we're aiming for. God hasn't called us to normal. He has called us to his kingdom. He's called us to kingdom living. And it's a supernatural life. But that will never happen unless we're willing to personally enlarge our lives, ourselves. It's be stretched, be lengthened, you know, be, be enlarged. And, and um, you know, making room for God is about making some effort uh, and determination to build 
a new, to build new and fresh things into our lives, making changes, adding extensions, you know, building onto what we already have. If you want to stretch yourself, you have to do something. You know, it's no good just sitting there thinking about all the wonderful things you could be doing with your life, you know, the exercises, you, you know, the healthy things you could be doing. And unless you actually do something, it, it doesn't make any difference. And there's something in the stretching. There's something in the stretching that happens. There's something about enlarging the places of your tent, which really is your life, your vision, your influence, your, your expectations, and your faith. And really, I think this message this morning is actually all about faith. The more you stretch and extend yourself, whether it's physically or, or spiritually, the end result is you become stronger. You become more, more flexible. You become more resilient, more equipped to reach God's kingdom purposes. And here's the thing. When you, when you exercise your faith in the same way you, and you start to believe for the impossible, for miracles, for God's presence to begin to change the world around you, you know, it's, it's an incredibly um, amazing journey that we, that we go on. I remember the story of um, when Jesus, um, he sent the disciples out in the boat, uh, out in the Sea of Galilee, and uh, he said, I'll, I'll meet you on the other side. And um, after Jesus, you know, stopped speaking to the crowd that was there, he went up into the hills uh, just to be on his own. And later that evening, the boat, with full of the disciples, it began to be tossed around by the sea because uh, the wind had come up and, and the disciples were fearful. And uh, Matthew 14 25 says, now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were, they were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Jesus said, come. And Peter had, came, um, Peter had come down out of the boat and he walked on the water to Jesus. You know, I think, I think God's waiting for us to do a bit of water walking. I think it's a season that we're entering into of water walking. He's wanting us to enlarge and, and expand our expectations, to stretch our, our faith, to stretch our believing, to make room for a few miracles to happen. And to at least, at the very least, be watching and asking Jesus if we can do the things he did, just like Peter did. He's waiting for us to, to exercise our faith, even if that's just mustard seed size faith. Because even mustard seed size faith can move mountains. It's time we got out of the boat, stretched our legs and walked on some water. The scripture does go on and says in verse 30, but when he saw, when Peter saw that the wind was um, boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, and I love that word, immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when, it, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Now, some would say that when Peter began to sink, Jesus was angry with him and chastised, chastised him, saying, You of little faith. But there are those that say, and which I personally believe as well, um, that when, when Peter began to sink... Um, that it was actually quite different to that. Yes, the words were spoken. But, but um, and Jesus says, uh, it says immediately, it says Jesus immediately stretched out his hand and caught him. Jesus loved Peter. He would have loved Peter's faith. Don't you think? He would have loved the fact that Peter had the faith to even get out of the boat in the first place. After all, one, you know, none of the others did. None of the other disciples did. None of the others even thought to ask. And none of the others would ever be able to say that they walked on water. 
just like Jesus. Jesus may very well have said the words, you have little faith, but I just have this picture, and others do as well, that he would have said it with love in his eyes and a smile on his face. In any case, whatever the case, um, his heart would have been for Peter to be encouraged and to be, you know, to stretch his believing even further. The point is, our faith is like a muscle. It needs to be exercised. It needs to be stretched, just like our physical bodies need to be exercised so that, you know, they can function the way that they're meant to function. And that stretching can be painful. Um, but, you know, Jesus wants to do this. He wants us to step into the supernatural. And we know that Peter, like the other disciples, turned into a different man um, as he continued to follow Jesus. And, and, of course, once the Holy Spirit came upon him. And as their faith grew together, the disciples, as they were stretched in ministry, um, the disciples began to be known as men who turned the world upside down. Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is rewarder of those who diligently seek him. There has to be some diligence about our walk with Jesus. Diligence in seeking after him, in praying, being washed by the word of God, loving God and loving others, you know, with passion. And isn't that enough, really, for us? You know, isn't that enough on its own to want to be stretched to please God? Don't we want to please God with our lives? Often that stretching happens in the midst of trials, in the midst of challenges, circumstances of life that are just difficult. This is where we as Christians can reach beyond our circumstances. We can lift our heads and see with the eyes of faith. And this is a theme that runs throughout the whole Bible. Men and women of faith growing and maturing to a place of laying their dreams, um, their visions, and even their whole lives before the throne of God. Hebrews 11, is, which I just quoted, comes in the midst of um, 11.6, comes in the midst of, of verses that testify to the power uh, of faith, the faith in those who have gone before us. Ones who, you know, found, were found righteous through faith. And th there was one who was taken up to heaven, um, you know, without even passing through death. The ones who stepped into new lands and new territories, receiving an incredible inheritance and promise, all by faith. Noah, you know, because of his godly faith, heard the voice of God and built an ark to save his household. Sarah, an old woman, way beyond childbearing years, she received strength, the Bible says, to conceive a child by faith. It was supernatural. The list is an amazing testimony to the grace and the power of God, but also to the faith and the trust of the men and women who sought him with their whole heart. They all died, except for Noah, but the rest died in faith, some of them not even seeing the promises fulfilled completely this side of heaven. But they saw them afar off, and they were assured of them. That's what faith is. You see the promise. You, you, you grab hold of the word of God. You see it afar off and you believe um, and, uh, and look to that, to that promise to be fulfilled. Their earnest expectation would never be found wanting, powerless or ineffective. And their lives still speak to us in the year 2022. How is that? Imagine people still speaking about your faith thousands of years after you've left the planet. That's the kind of faith we are called to. It starts with a vision of where faith will lead us. That's, that's all you know, we had when this church was started. What do you see when you look ahead with the eyes of faith? What do you see when you stretch yourself to believe? When you, when you see your tent enlarging, the curtains of your life stretching out before you, you know, the cords being lengthened and your stakes being strengthened 
secured, established in faith in who God is, what do you see for your own life? What do you see for the life of Arise Church? And it's not just having faith in faith. It's not faith in nothing. It's faith in the nature and the character of God. It's who God is that we have faith in. When Paul found himself in chains, in prison, falsely accused, suffering on every level, how did he respond? He started preaching. He wrote a letter to the Philippians telling them of the goodness of God. He turned his focus away from himself and, and put his eyes upon Jesus and on those he was called to reach. And I love what Paul says in Philippians 1.19. It says, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He's in a dungeon, right? In chains. Like, not like a prison we have now. Um, and he says, I know, I know that I'm going to be released. My deliverance is coming. You're praying. I've got the spirit of Jesus Christ with me. He goes on and says, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. But with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death, for, for, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Imagine that faith. Imagine just living that every day. Go, Paul. Can we stretch our faith to reach this same place of trust and expectation that Paul had? God wants you to enlarge your capacity, to grow your capacity, to trust in every circumstance. And that's a big statement. Trust in every circumstance. Are we going to allow the circumstances of life to determine our focus, our hope, and our vision for the future, or are we going to trust God? Are we going to grow in our faith, stretch our faith, exercise our faith, to believe that God knows exactly what he's doing? In the end, we will all die, unless, you know, Jesus comes back first, or we're like Enoch and we just aren't there. Um, Otherwise, we're all going to die. One day, we, we just won't be here either. But like Paul says, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that gain is going to be indescribable. By the way, when Paul talks about having an earnest expectation, when you go back to the original language, the original Greek, it actually means lifting your head and reaching forward. It's like, like you know, like this. Um... And um, it, it means to stretch forward, to stretch forward, to gaze into the future with hope. That's what we're called to. 2 Chronicles 16.9 says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. I believe this is a prophetic word for you guys today because um, that there's, there's, God wants to do some strengthening. It's stretching, but also strengthening your lives right where you are. Whatever your circumstances, position yourself to be strengthened. Let him help you to strengthen your stakes in faith and in life. Don't put your faith in your circumstances. Put your faith in the goodness of God, in the character of Christ in you, in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory, to live is Christ. We sang the song before, I lay my life down. That means you take up the life of Christ. And living means growing, maturing, reaching forward. Ephesians 4.13 says, Till we come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, now, sometimes we can read the Bible, we can read the Word of God and think, oh, that's all, it's really nice, you know, it's all really good, um, it, it sounds really great, but we don't actually believe it, we don't believe it for ourselves, we don't take it on as this is actually what I'm called to. Every one of us are called to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. If you don't hear anything else 
today. Just take that home. Um, then it goes on and says that we should no longer be children. God's calling us to maturity. No longer be, be children, tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery, trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. There's a lot of that going on. Um, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I actually started out quite frivolous this morning, talking about exercise. I'm getting really serious now. This is my serious part. You see, this is not just about us as individuals. It's about the body maturing. It's about the church maturing and growing, but also stretching forward. The church getting up on their tippy toes, reaching forward with expectation, earnest expectation. And you know what? Sometimes there are growing pains. Sometimes we just have to push through by faith. And I think the church might be in one of those seasons right now. I'm not just talking about a rise. I'm talking about the church generally. There are growing pains and it's time to push through, exercise our faith. It's time to grow up. Grow up into Christ. Get out of our complacency. Have an earnest expectation. Have some boldness that Christ will be magnified in this body and this body. In Philippians, this sermon was written in a dungeon, in a prison, written in chains. Paul says, it's time to put on the new man in righteousness and holiness. I just can't, like, I just try to imagine Paul in this situation, probably starving, thirsty, dirty, it's freezing cold. And he says, it's time to put on the new, the new man. Even in that place of captivity, his heart and his faith, they were never kept captive. I hope God's speaking to us this morning. He still had faith for the lost to be found. He wrote it. He wrote it in prison. For the lost to be found, for the broken to be healed, for the old man to be buried and the new man to rise up in faith-filled life. You know, most of us, if not all of us, are still making wonderful discoveries about what it means to live as a new man or a new woman. Um, and it's an exciting journey. Just as I finish this morning, when Vanessa and I were in Bible college, which was like a thousand years ago, um, we, we had to bring short sermons uh, to practice preaching. And if you'd heard me speak back then, you would have wondered what on earth was God thinking. But I remember clearly in one of those Bible college classes, another student who is now the pastor of one of the biggest churches in Toowoomba, he brought this very simple message from the prophet Joel, and it's always stayed with me. I've always remembered him bringing this five-minute sermon. That's how impacting it was. And it's from Joel 3, 9 to 10. It says, Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up, the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Like these are confident, bold words. It's not like, oh, if you're feeling okay about it, you know, if, you, if, it's, if it's not too much trouble. Uh, it says, let the weak say, I am strong. If you're feeling weak here this morning, don't say you're weak. Say, I'm strong. Because in Christ, you have Christ in you. You have the strength of Christ in you. Wake up the mighty men. Wake up the mighty women. Make, wake up the mighty young people. You know, we're in a spiritual battle and it requires a spiritual, faith-filled response. Normal and natural, and she'll be right, just won't cut it. Wake up to what God still wants to do in and through your life. Grow up. Grow up. Be strengthened. 
Even the weak can say by faith, I am strong. You know, physical exercise is important. This is, you know, this is the um, temple of the Holy Spirit, right? We've got to look after it. But it's not nearly as important as building and exercising our spiritual lives, stretching our faith, enlarging the place of our spiritual influence, expressing the gifts of, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit in a lost and hurting world. We are meant to live on the level of water walkers, Men and women of faith, men and women who stretch forward, not bound by the past. You know, and as I speak about the beginnings of a rise church before, it's not about that anymore. It's about looking forward. It's about reaching forward, having earnest expectation about what's going, what God's going to do. He's done some incredible things. Let's celebrate that. But it's more importantly now about, God, what are you going to do ahead? Earnestly and and eagerly expecting an incredible future full of hope. So my last word is, wake up. Wake up. Grow up. And I say that in the most loving and with the most loving and, and, you know, um, passionate encouragement. There are battles that we will have to face. um, But we will face them and we will win. There will be victories. There are victories to come that we will be part of. Amen? Amen. Come on. (laughs) If I was sitting there, I'd be shouting out, you know. It's the word of God. It's not me. It's not the it's the word of God. Let it let it let it transform you. Let it stretch you. If you're feeling stretched by it, great. You know? It's awesome. Let's pray. Father, Holy Spirit, I ask that you minister this word to each person individually here this morning. And I I know that many would be just going through stuff. You know, there are difficult things that we face. There are seasons in life that are trials. But Lord... We acknowledge that, but then we lift our eyes and we put our eyes upon you. Our faith is in you. It's in who you are. You are a good, good father. And we focus on the goodness of God and we we reach forward with earnest expectation at what you're going to do. Lord, in the end, to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's, Lord, it's a win-win. But we, we, we don't want to miss one thing while we're still on this earth. We don't want to miss one thing out of what you have called us to do. Each one of us have the days of our you know, lives, every word written in the book of life. Lord, let us fulfill every single thing that you've written in there. And as the church together, oh Lord, let it be such a, a beacon of light. Lord, let it be such a, a powerful place of of your anointing and of the power of the you know the signs and wonders and salvations and healing miracles lord let it be that that powerhouse of 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 the anointed presence of god let the word not just be enclosed within these four walls but be extended out into the community even today lord spiritually just send forth your word change us lord in the end That's what we say. Lord, change me. Stretch me. Help me to mature, to grow up. Lord, to be bold in my faith, in believing. And Lord, and and, and even bold enough to say, Lord, can I? Can I do the things that you did? And your word says that, yes, we can. And Lord, help us to hear your voice and to respond. Let's pray your blessing your favour upon every person here. I pray, Lord God, that you would just cover them and keep them, protect them. But Lord, not in that place of complacency. Um, Lord, your, your, your love for us goes way beyond just settling for complacent and normal. Your love means that we're stretched to grow and mature, to become strong. 
And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, just Daniel, are you still here? Can, you, can your team come? Can we sing the goodness again? <clears throat> um, the goodness of the Lord. Just thinking, you know, um, that was great. And you know what, church, it's easy to come to church on a Sunday, hear a great word, go home and live life as it deals it to us. My encouragement is in a couple of days when Luke has put that up online, just have a moment on your own where you just have that word spoken over your life again because I, I do actually think that's a prophetic word for the church, big picture, arise, corporate, individual, but big picture. And the beauty of COVID, I think, is that it's just shaken the pants off the church, amen, and made us look at the state of affairs, as it were. And, you know, God calls us to be bold. And I think in these times, we will be called to be bold and to step out and to take some risks. And, you know, you'll upset a few along the way. That's okay. But Christianity was never about making a decision. It was a journey of becoming a disciple and making disciples. And that's a day-to-day -day thing. So blessings to you, blessings to your church community as we do this journey together. Let's just sing that song because sometimes to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, we have to choose to look for the goodness because it's very easy to see the funky, isn't it? And there's a lot of funky happening at the moment. So let's choose to look for the goodness of the Lord in this moment.